We're back now at 808. You can't believe everything you read, and when it comes to your favorite magazines, maybe you can't believe everything you see either. You could call it a photo finish, a fake on. I wasn't surprised to see that the lines on her face were softened a bit. That's something I kind of expected. I think I was more surprised by what they did to her body. The untouched photo of the Mississippi singer was uncovered by the website Jezebel.com that offered a $10,000 reward for the best raw photo that later appeared as a retouched cover. Getting an unretouched cover photo is a pretty difficult thing to do. There are only a few people who have access to these. Our goal in every cover is to create an incredibly beautiful image that people just want to pick up and peek inside. The editor-in-chief of Red Book, Stacey Morrison, explains the decision as an industry standard. Magazine images are meant to be enticing and striking, but in the end, they're not really photographs, they're images. While Faith Hill has made no comment, in 2003, actress Kate Winslet made it clear she was not happy with this altered image in GQ. I wasn't annoyed with the magazine because this is what they do and they retouch a lot, but it suddenly occurred to me that in fact people, people that buy these publications don't always realize that that's what happens. So this is Martha Stewart's head and somebody else's body. Professor Hani Farid is an expert in what he calls digital forensics. It's clearly deceiving the readers. Uh, they are changing reality to some degree. Warning consumers to view every cover with caution. I think anybody looking at these images should realize that these are highly, highly doctored and not necessarily representative of reality. Dr. Gail Saltz is a psychiatrist and a Today contributor, and David Zinzenko is the editor-in-chief of Men's Health Magazine. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. Let's take a closer look at this image of Faith Hill. First, we have a picture of the picture that was actually taken of her for at the photo shoot. Look, she looks terrific in that picture. And then here's what the cover did. Now, it's difficult to tell the difference, but if you put them side by side, you can see clearly that they made her a lot thinner in her arm, in her waist, and in her thigh. And they, they took out uh, uh, any minor lines that she had in her face. Um, is this an industry standard, David? Uh, I don't think it's an industry standard. I think, you know, editors are constantly trying to walk the line between, you know, selling an aspirational or aspirational imagery to people who want a window into a glamorous world. And you can, you can tweak a little bit. When you start to mess with somebody's physicality, though, and you start adding and subtracting, that's where it gets really dicey and you shouldn't do it. I think well, you, when you shouldn't do it, but I'm asking you if they're doing it, not whether they should or shouldn't do it. For example, we heard about the Kate Winslet example in GQ magazine. There are other examples you're mentioning. Right. At some point, Time magazine had to apologize for right. uh, a picture it used of O.J. Okay. Simpson. It had altered uh, regarding O.J. Simpson. So is it an industry standard is the I, question. I think a lot of people are doing it m more now than ever before because of all of the digital imagery that's available. It's very easy for people to take those di digital images and alter them and in very obvious ways and now thanks to Jezebel and others they're getting caught. Jezebel.com. So what's the problem with that? What is the is, problem is with that? Is there a problem with the that? The problem is that frankly it's setting a standard to some degree for every person because women are looking at this cover and saying to themselves, oh, I look nothing like this. I'm never going to look anything like this and they're feeling bad. I mean the fact that that magazines are needing to do it or are wanting to do it is because that's what women want to buy. Exactly. So, so you know, can I tell you then the yes. problem is with us? We're it, saying it, 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 you're saying that we are our you're own saying worst that we enemy. want to buy magazines Correct. with women who are incredibly thin Correct. and incredibly perfect, and yes. yet they make us feel bad about ourselves. Yes, so they do. I mean, we need some therapy. We, <laughs> what about what about what about men's magazine? I mean, you're the, the editor in chief of your magazine. Yeah. Are you saying you never do it because we, I got to tell you, some of those guys on the cover of your magazine look pretty. Hot. Well, sometimes, you know, and they and a lot of times what we're doing is there might be some like color enhancement where you where you mess with the contrast, where you're bringing out detail in a shirt or or an expression in the face or the whiteness in the eyes, and I think that's totally fine. That's standard in the industry. I think it crosses the line when you start to feel less like an editor and more like a cast member on Nip Tuck, and you're like making all of these alterations. For us, we moved away from kind of perfect looking models three years ago to celebrities, many of whom were wearing T-shirts, and that. That's what guys wanted. They wanted somebody who looked real and not like they were beamed down from another planet. We showed a copy but of uh, the cover of fit, uh, mm -hmm. Men's Fitness mm -hmm. and it had Andy Roddick and he yes. sort of said, you know, I wish I had guns that big at some point later on. I mean, he busted the magazine. So, you know what? You know, we're I missing think, the point. We're missing the point. We are our own worst enemies. Yeah. Faith Hill's an incredibly talented, gifted, smart 
loving, mm -hmm. and for all those reasons, incredibly attractive woman. And we miss the we yeah. miss the boat. We are but looking I, I, only at the physical. But I think we also have to remember, though, that that people are coming to the magazine to get a lifestyle or to get inspired. Sometimes it may cross the line. But the fact is, anybody who makes their career in front of a camera knows that the camera captures imperfections. It's you know the the lighting can throw a shadow that translates as a wrinkle. You can look five to ten pounds heavier. You can look blotchy. And I think you have to go in. And guess what? Celebrities have egos. They say, look, you better make me look good. I've taken eight hours out of my day to sit there and like take hundreds of photos. And they don't want a bad photo. But can I also say, too, that I think that's clear from this Jezebel.com and also by the fact that we're having this conversation that there's a segment of society that really wants real, something real. That's right. Yeah. And they're struggling for something that's real. That's right. The yeah. Dove there's, commercial, a, there's a struggle. I mean, there are people who do want to acknowledge that, in fact, People are yeah. imperfect. And what, and I, On that note, we have to leave it. I'm so sorry, yeah. David and Dr. Thank Gail. You, thank you so thank much, you. both of you. And. Um